So everybody, I wanted to touch base and let you guys know that we're upping our marketing game here. Um, you guys have seen a lot of my videos in the past and I'm gonna rehash some of them. A lot of them were cell phone videos that I took years ago that were kind of just live videos. And yeah, I wanted to do this from a produced uh, perspective, which I think you guys deserve, which I think um, at this point, Hard Money Bankers deserves. And I'm gonna go into some more of the Moment Money Matters topics. We'll talk about them. I think first I'm gonna kind of give a history uh, on myself. I don't know who knows much about me or, or what, but um, I've been in the investing game for probably about 10 years. I like, actually entered the market when it was crashing in 2008 and uh, did not know what I was doing. I was fresh out of school and read that book Robert, by Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Saw that line in there about he flipped a contract for like $40,000 in Arizona. And uh, I had to figure out what the heck that meant. What the hell, you know, how do you do this? I thought all I knew about real estate was kind of like what a realtor does, uh, where they represent you and sell your house and you move into it. That's all I knew. Uh, but I figured if one other person could do it, I could figure it out. So I kind of went on a mission and realized, you know, I'm going to start with wholesaling, which is where a lot of real estate investors start. So I think it was like 2007, 2008, right around then. Um, did not know a darn thing about the market, but I did my research and understood what wholesaling was, realized it's not really that difficult of a uh, thing to do to begin with. So I said, all right, let's, uh, now I gotta go find some investors. And I kind of went through the same thing that a lot of other new investors go through, which is you kind of look for somebody that maybe is in the game. Can they help you? Can they mentor you? That's what you want because we always use, we always look for a crutch outside of ourselves, which there's nothing wrong with that. It's probably the natural tendency of the tra trajectory for somebody in the business or learning the business. But, um, you know, I soon there learned that everything, I already had all of what I needed and most people, everybody does. You don't really actually need anybody else, but there are definitely people along the way that help a ton. Um, you know, I remember, I think I bumped into a guy that was doing sheriff sales I said, hey, I'll, I'll do your marketing for you. I'll, I'll find you deals. And he, I said, just, I just want to be around what you're doing um, while I was trying to wholesale. So my very first wholesale deal, I was actually living in a one-bedroom condo in uh, Burlington, the Burlington area of New Jersey. And what I did was um, I literally just printed out about 300 uh, cards that said, I'm an investor, I'll buy your house cash, and put them on everybody's door. I got a lot of phone calls. I actually got like 12 or 13 phone calls right before the market had crashed or it was as it was crashing. I looked at one of the deals and said to my, to my um, sheriff sale buddy, I said, hey, I think we can get this at XYZ number. What number do you need it at? He said, I need it this number. I said, okay, well, let me go talk to the guy. So I'm looking at my card. I remember this. I was looking at the card, trying to find this guy's you know, unit number. I walk down the stairs in my building. I look across, walk up the stairs in the next building, come to find out that the house, the very first property I wholesaled was literally the balcony across from mine, probably 20 feet from me. So I didn't even know there was, I think I made like five or six grand on that deal, but there was five or $6,000 just sitting across from me. And I was like, man, is it this easy? Do I just walk out my front door and then somebody else is sitting there with money for me? But it's not, uh, but it was a good experience. I, learned, I wholesaled it, um, you know, and, and realized that this is a doable business. I also wanted to push forward because I remember uh, you know, my parents had told me, or my, my father had told me at the time, he goes, you can't do that. You know, it doesn't make sense. You can't do it. Cause he only knew anything, what he knew about, um, you know, real estate invest or real estate, a realtor. I said, well, if you say I can't do it, then I have to do it. Right. So, um, and we could talk in another uh, video. I actually talked about it last week on a podcast with, uh, finding your micro, um, your micro motivation on a daily basis, which that kind of was. So I pushed forward and I started wholesaling one more property, two more properties, three more, all marketing, constantly marketing with mailers, uh, in the Burlington city area was where I kind of outgrew that area pretty quickly and came into the Philadelphia market. Um, I said, I'm going to learn this market now. And I actually went and saw one of those bandit signs that said, we buy houses. And I figured I'd start calling some people, seeing what they're doing, what the market looks like. Ended up making a phone call to the first bandit sign and called the guy and he said, hey, I'm wholesaling. I said, oh, well, I'm wholesaling too. And then he went ahead and I said, you want to meet? So we literally, I think it was later that day, met at a diner, um, started talking and we said, do you want to be partners? And that was it. We shook hands, never signed a document to this day. And uh, we ended up being wholesaling partners at the time. And we, with our two minds combined, we really got after it, started learning how to build a business. 
because uh, really you're building a business once you understand the, the logistics of the marketing um, and how to generate revenue. So my partner and I, you know, took two different sides of the business. I was the dispositions and or no, I'm sorry, I was the selling selling end. He was the dispositions, and I was him and I would both do marketing. And we just grew it and we became one of the biggest wholesale companies in Philadelphia. I don't remember, hundreds of deals a year back then, it was a lot. And then uh, the wholesaling business though can tend to be volatile. So what you tend to find is like, you'll find that people will do a deal, you do four or five deals while you're putting out twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a month in marketing. And all of a sudden um, you don't have some closings, but you still have to put out the twenty or $30,000 in marketing to get the deals that come down the pipeline. So after you know six or eight months of having a hundred thousand dollar month to a zero month to a hundred thousand dollar month to a zero month, we actually said, hey, maybe we should stabilize the revenue and um, and go ahead and open up a property management company. Well, or just try property management because it's you know reoccurring fees and it makes sense and we weren't afraid of anything at that time. Nobody likes property management. Well, it was kind of a timing and opportunity thing. So we had sent out mailers the same way we did with wholesaling and said, hey, do you want your property managed? Lo and behold, we get a phone call and then we get another phone call and we get another phone call. All of a sudden, overnight, we have like 100 properties that we're managing. The need in the market at the time was from the crash of the market where a lot of people were getting wrapped up in the hype. They bought a bunch of properties that were over leveraged and then they realized they couldn't cash flow and they had to go back and get a real job and they needed somebody to manage these properties. So we kind of were built off the crash of the market at that time because there was an influx of these people. It was a totally different clientele than kind of what we deal with now. Uh, so myself and my partner then built the largest management company at the time in the uh, in the Philadelphia region. Uh, got up to maybe six or seven hundred properties. Learned how to build out systems. Learned how to have departments, accounting, um, maintenance, collections, all that stuff. Just just figured it out. It's not very tough, but there's a lot of moving parts. I don't give myself more credit than I'm due because it's not I'm not the smartest guy you'll ever meet. But uh, you'll certainly realize that if you work hard enough at something, you'll figure out the steps in it. So we built that up, it was called Atlas Property Management. And then we went ahead and um, I was uh, gave, got a phone call one day because we said, hey, how do we grow more? How do we grow faster? So we started reaching out to a bunch of management companies around saying, hey, can we buy you? Can we buy you? Can we buy you? So we were in this mode to grow, uh, to then grow by buying or buyouts. And uh, we had bought a couple along the way and I received a response from one guy that said, hey, I wanna buy you. I said, eh, we're not for sale, we're in this growth mode. He goes, well, no, I, can we meet? I said, he goes, look me up. My name, my, my name is Ben Aller. And I said, Ben Aller, it doesn't do anything for me, whatever. Blew him off, blew him off. He emailed me again, probably three months later and said, hey, are we gonna meet or what? And I said, well, put an offer on it. And he goes, $40 million. I'm like, $40 million, come on, man. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna meet this guy. He's, you know, is he being a jerk to me? He's not, or is he antagonizing me? So we meet at a diner. I never looked up his last name to this uh, to that day, and we started eating. And he goes, "Hey, my family um, started the management industry." I said, "Get out of here!" And you know, he goes, "We we control about two billion dollars in in real estate, and and own about forty thousand units, and blah blah blah." And I said, "This is a joke." He goes, "No, Google it." I said, "Okay." So I'm sitting there at the diner, or I'm sorry, we were at a um, at a, a restaurant, sitting there. I'm Googling it and his name comes up and I go, oh man, I go, he's not kidding. So legitimately this guy, uh, you know, his family is who they said they were. So within an hour we struck a deal and um, walked away from there. I said, yep, I'll do it. And they then bought us to now what you have is, and I retained some partnership in that, came on to help them grow out their systems. And now you have TCS Management, uh, which is the largest management company in the Philadelphia region for sure. And um, it was quite an interesting course of events. And uh, at the time though that I had sold, uh, I had two silent partners in the hard money world down in Maryland building hard money bankers. And hard money bankers in Maryland uh, was easily the most dominant um, hard money company. I loved the business model that they had. And I said, hey, I'm kind of not so much in the management world anymore. You know, do you guys wanna get that going up here? So we had deployed some capital along the way, but we really said, let's step on the gas. So we decided to do that uh, probably four or five years ago now. And um, we then decided we're gonna put hard money in the, in the Philadelphia area. So that's how hard money bankers came into the Philadelphia, South Jersey region, was we just, um, you know, I guess I, I was too young to decide to retire kind of thing. And um, so we ended up bringing you up here. 
And one of the reasons it all kind of actually ties together, a lot of, you know, one of the reasons I'm able to do what I do, which effectively is decide what an asset is worth. I don't use appraisals. I don't use, um, we're not like banks. I don't, you know, if you don't have a 700 credit score, it doesn't mean you're not doing a deal with me. I do deals with people that have 500 credit scores. How do you do that and protect your asset and protect the money and not lose it uh, by lending? A lot of it is knowing the market. So one of the things that people always ask me is like, what do you, where do you start? What do you do? I said, learn your market and learn to market. It's a really good saying. It's very, uh, if you take that to heart and you really understand that, those two things are huge because you know how to spot a deal and you know how to find a deal. That's what that develops. And what we were able to do is we've done a ton of loans based on you know my knowledge of the market and what a property is truly worth. How do you comp a property? What's it gonna resell at? What's the pitfalls of that property? What can we run into? All those things have just come from originally wholesaling because wholesaling going all the way back 10 years or 11 years or whatever was a um, was actually me underwriting hundreds and hundreds of deals and understanding what they're worth and at the time that the, the world was ending in 2008 you had a situation where only the there was no more banks giving money at that time it was cash buyers the cash buyers were sitting the real cash buyers were sitting in the in the waiting uh, you know along the shore along you know where the sharks eat and they were waiting for this moment to happen. And what had what occurred was when they came out of the water to acquire everything, they were basically signaling, this is a crash, this is when we buy. Because we buy, you know, smart cash buyers worth 60 or $70 million don't buy at the top of a market. These are guys that know how to time a cycle. So I didn't realize back then that the guys that were dictating my wholesaling and underwriting, so to say, were guys that were saying, this is what we pay for it, and this is either what you sell it to us for, or we don't care because we have so much money, it doesn't matter. If I sell it to them at a discount, sure, they're gonna take free money, why not? So I learned how to sell to them because those are the smartest people in the market, and then that, in turn, ended up sharpening the tools, right? It learned, taught me, you know, you can't, when you're near the top of a market, typically what you see a lot of times uh, are people overpaying for properties, and if you're learning to wholesale in that market, um, and you're not wholesaling to big sharks or big whales, as they call them, then you're going to think that that is sustainable for a long period of time. And what happens is the market turns, all the prices come down, and the, what you thought you could sell it for, what you thought a deal was prior, is no longer a deal. And you've got to know how to analyze a deal, why it's not a deal. So that's kind of the background to what we have going on. And uh, hopefully you guys, that's, that's what I do, um, which is either probably not very interesting to most, but people that'll be watching this will hopefully, um, if they're like, who's this guy talking? You know, they can watch this video and understand that, you know, I, I know a thing or two about our, our market here. And, um, you know, so when I speak, I'm not speaking from a position of, uh, you see a lot of people on social media that probably have never done a deal trying to tell you how to, you know, what you should, should and shouldn't do. So it's important to know who you're listening to. So appreciate that.